So, in last three lectures uh, of this NPTEL course on tribology of materials, um, I have discussed uh, the fundamentals of uh, tribology, uh, the friction mechanisms as well as uh, surface characteristics and how to quantitatively characterize the tribological surfaces. Um, so, what I am going to do in this particular lecture is to discuss how to quantitatively uh, compute the contact temperature. So, contact temperature means what is the temperature rise at the tribological surfaces and that is largely due to the friction at the matting surfaces. And this as I, I, th I think I have mentioned once or twice in last couple of lectures that uh, this precise measurement of the contact temperature at the asperity asperity contact is next to impossible experimentally. Therefore, it is important to use certain theoretical models to uh, predict that what would be the rise in the contact temperature at the asperity asperity contact surface. So, so let us first recap. Uh, in this particular slide, what we have learned from last one or two lectures. Uh, so, if you look at this diagram, this is a spherical ball which is in contact with a flat surfaces. These both these surfaces as you can see, they are nominally flat. If you see these particular flat surfaces, these flat surfaces are also nominally flat. However, as I have mentioned couple of times during the course of last three lectures that each of the surfaces whether it is sphere or flat surfaces they have number of asperities. These asperities they have different heights and also they have different radius of curvature. So, if, if I so if I recap that surface asperities. So, surface asperities they have two different features particularly we have mentioned uh, A that they have different heights, uh, different heights from the mean line. Okay. So, so, how to define mean line? Mean line on any particular surfaces for example, if I refer to this kind of surfaces. So, mean line the way the mean line is defined, mean line is defined if this is ML, mean line is defined as a line which divides this entire surfaces with the fact that above the mean line 50 percent of the material is contained within the asperities and below the mean line again 50 percent of the materials are content in these asperities. So, essentially what I am saying this is H 1, this is this is this height is H 2, this height is H 3, this height is H 4. So, H 1 is not equal to H 2 is not equal to H 3 is not equal to H 4 and so on. Okay. So, what I am saying that all the asperities they have a unique heights and second thing this asperities also have a different radius of curvature. So, these are very important thing then different radius of curvature and these ra different radius of curvature essentially also would influence uh, uh, the stress behavior the stress that is experienced at the tribological surfaces. And so, in reference to the uh, this earlier discussion and in particular in the context of this particular figure, what it has been mentioned that there is a contact shown that will be developed and this is the contact shown when this particular uh, sliding solid here is the sphere will slide against a stationary solid. Then at this contact zone this will be this will experience extremely high temperature. What I mean by that suppose the outside temperature is T and this contact zone average temperature is T C. So, certainly T C is greater than T. 
what it means is that although you conduct the experiments at ambient temperature, but at the contact zone temperature is fairly high, much much higher than the ambient temperature. And who, who, what is responsible for the increased temperature? The main factor which causes this frictional temperature rise is the coefficient of friction. We will come to that slowly one by one. Now, let us recap also what we have mentioned in the last class. So, this particular sphere is pressed against the flat solid by a load W, normal load W and then it is given the velocity, relative velocity here at the contact surfaces. And then in, the, in this particular contact zone, what is the average pressure? Average pressure would be P naught, the P naught is equal to 3 W by 2 pi A square. What is A? A is your contact radius. So, this contact radius can be calculated by this particular equation and if you remember correctly, this particular make uh, uh, this particular for um, expression comes from Hergian contact mechanic solution. So it comes from the solution of the Hergian contact mechanics. So A is equal to cube root of three W R star divided by four E star, where R star is the effective radius that can be calculated by this one, this particular equation. E star is the effective modulus that can be particularly expressed by this particular one, 1 by E star is equal to this one. Okay. So, now what I am trying to emphasize once more that this contact region not only would experience high contact stresses, but also it would experience extremely high temperature. Now, let us look at this contact region little bit more closely. Now, for your better understanding, I am showing here only one surface, the top surface has been removed. Okay. So, what you see here in this bottom flat surface that is the conical region here and you can see that this particular conical region is actually what we can call is like a hot spot. This hot spot essentially means this is that asperity asperity contact region. So, this is called asperity, asperity contact. So, exactly asperity, asperity contact and they will constitute all these hot spots will constitute real contact area. So, if you visualize the situation, what you see that this particular asperity, the from the matting solid another asperity comes and that makes this particular contact. Here again another aspirity comes from the matting solid that it comes, but for the simplicity for the representation here, I am not showing the aspirity from the top surfaces, I am just showing the bottom surface only. Now let us look at that what is the length scale of this aspirity aspirity contact region. What you see here that radius of this particular contact region is r is equal to 2 to 5 micron. The depth to which this asperity goes below in the surface is 10 micron. So, most, most, so essentially what you need to remember the typical contact region radius is 2 to 5 micron and this depth is also going to 10 micron. So, this depth is the region where the any heat that is generated it will be conducted through the solid. So, essentially although the tribology friction and wire is surface dominated phenomena, but if you remember in the last or last lecture I have mentioned that there is something called subsurface stress region. So, subsurface stress region means if I, if I draw here corresponding subsurface stress region, there is a shear stress which goes to a maximum and this maximum is 0.48 times A, A is your contact radius. So, this is your dimension Z by A, A is your contact dimension and this is your stress either tau or sigma r and there are some of the stress which will go like this, some of the stress profile will go like this. So, this is your shear stress tau. Okay. 
So, this is your shear stress tau and then you can see that how this stress will. So, what I am saying that all these all this stress distribution and temperature both will vary in this 10 micron depth. Okay. So, this 10 micron depth is quite large and across this length scale, but length scale in the z directions the stress and temperature will vary. Okay. Now, let this this one is again it is showing that multiple aspirate aspirate contact. So, suppose if it is your solid 1 and this is your solid 2. So, this is one particular area aspirate aspirate contacts, this is another one, this is third one. So, what you see that although your nominal contact area would constitute all the asperity asperity surfaces, but your real contact area. So, you have something called nominal contact area of the surface and you have something called real contact area of the surface. So, real contact area would essentially constitute of 1 plus 2 plus 3. I hope I am clear on this particular point. So, real contact area essentially would constitute of the actual asperity asperity contacts. It will not constitute of this one no, it will not constitute this one no, it will not consider this one, it will not consider this one. Wherever the asperities from both the solids they come and they interact that is the region that will constitute the real contact area AR. Okay. Now, we will see some of these equations. Uh, so, this is with reference to pin on disc. Why pin on disc? Because pin on disc contact is most widely used in tribological research and also tribological industry. So, pin on disc is kind of widely accepted. So, pin it is a cylindrical pin right. This cylindrical pin is held in a particular uh, pin holder and this pin holder is like you it works like a heat sink. So, it is kept at a ambient temperature T naught. Now, this is a pin and this is your contact area right. So, this contact area essentially what we are saying that nominal contact area. So, nominal contact area I have mentioned to you in the last uh, slide. So, nominal contact area A n is equal to A subscript n is equal to pi r naught square where r naught is your contact radius. Okay. Now, you have a disc which is which is uh, which can be either rotating or your pin can be stationary. So, one of these matting solids either pin or disc is either stationary or rotating. Now, this is the contact area A n nominal contact area not real contact area where heat will be generated and then heat flask will be conducted either through pin or through the disc or in other words you can say that whatever heat that will be generated the contact region that will be partitioned between the pin and between the disc. Okay. Now, wh to what extent this will be partitioned between the pin on the disc that depends on what are the relative properties of the pin and what are the relative properties of the disc. So, relative properties of the pin this properties for the K 2 is your thermal conductivity and alpha is the thermal diffusivity. Similarly, pin is that H 1 K 1 is your thermal conductivity and alpha 1 is your uh, 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 thermal diffusivity. So, typically alpha is your thermal diffusivity and K 1 is your thermal conductivity. So, the subscript the subscript 1 and 2 essentially means that is that what is whether it is a disc or in the pin. Now, what would be the total heat that would be generated that has been mentioned here. So, total heat is nothing but Q is equal to mu is coefficient of friction P A is nothing but P naught what you have seen in the earlier things. So, P naught if you remember correctly P naught is equal to 3 w by 2 pi with respect to this particular equations particular figure it is 2 pi r naught square. 
So, this is your P naught that is the apparent contact pressure or nominal contact pressure V small v this v is your sliding velocity what is a n not a a a n is your nominal contact area and a r is equal to real contact area. Now, let me write this equation again q is equal to mu p naught v is a sliding velocity a n divided by a n a r. So, A n is your normal contact area that is P pi r naught square and P naught is equal to nothing but 3 w 3 w by 2 pi r square your real contact area is this one A r. So, A r if you look at this particular slide it is very clear to you that A r would be much much less than A n right physically it is clear because real contact area is much smaller than the nominal contact area because nominal contact area is across the entire surface and real contact area will constitute only the asperity asperity contact. So, now if you go back to this particular case, so from this particular case A n by A r with this argument A n by A r would be much greater than 1 because your A r is very small right. If A r is small then A n by A r would be much greater than 1. So, you can see from simple arguments that heat generated would be quite substantial in magnitude and this heat that it will be partitioned between the pin and disc that we can calculate by this particular equation. The, there are several models that are ap, ap, uh, available. So, one of the model is called Kong Ashby model. Mike Ashby was a professor at Cambridge University. So, what they proposed that flash temperature T f, what is flash temperature? So, there are two temperatures that is important, one is called flash temperature. flash temperature is nothing but the uh, temperature at real asperity asperity contact. And that is something called bulk temperature. So, in all these mathematical equations that will follow now, we will be using these two terms. One is that flash temperature T f and one is a bulk temperature T b. So, this is the temperature at nominal contact area. So, nominal contact area means that is the uh, that is the contact area which will comprise that entire thing. So, this nominal contact area would be A n, but real contact area would be would constitute only these three contact points particularly in reference to this particular figure. Okay. Now, if you look at these equations what you see here that T f is your flash temperature. Now, T b prime can be find out from this particular equation ok. Mu is your coefficient of friction, P is nothing but P naught, V is your sliding velocity, A r is your real contact area. So, the moment you put A r, A r is much much smaller than A n. So, typically your flash temperature would be very high. Now, there are terms again inside this particular bracket what you see one upon K 1 is your thermal conductivity, L 1 f is your thermal heat distance like you know through length scale through which heat is conducted in the pin, K 2 is your thermal conductivity of the disc and L 2 f is your thermal diffusivity distance in the disc. So, that means the distance through which heat is conducted in the disc. 
Now, T B is your bulk temperature as I said before. So, T F is your flash temperature. and T B is your bulk temperature. Now, T B what you see T naught is your actual ambient temperature mu F B divided by A n. So, in one of the cases T F flash temperature you see that is real area of contact is taken A r. When, when you define that bulk temperature it is the nominal contact area A n which is taken, mu is your coefficient of friction, capital F is your frictional force, V is your sliding speed. 1 divided by K 1 and K 2, K 1 is your thermal conductivity of solid 1, K 2 is your thermal conductivity of solid 2 and L 1 B is your thermal conductivity, thermal diffusion distance in bulk in solid 1 and bulk in solid 2. So, if you plug in all these values now T B values you put it here and then if you put this T B prime values here then you can get the T F. So, bulk temperature calculation is fairly easier compared to flash temperature. Okay. So, this T F and T B you can calculate in this manner. Now, this other things which are important is that this is that actually that all these different uh, uh, parameters which are used in all these expressions. So, A n and A r as I said nominal contact area and real contact area. Uh, then uh, this is P is your normal load, H is your hardness, K 1, K 2 is the thermal conductivities of solid 1 and solid 2, L 1 f and L 2 f I have mentioned while well, defining flash temperature that is equivalent linear heat diffusion distance. L 1 B and L 2 B is your equivalent linear heat diffusion distances for the two matting solids in case of bulk heating and uh, R naught is your radius of normal contact area, R A is the radius of a junction, V is your sliding velocity and mu is your coefficient of friction. So, again this how to find out that L 1 f and L 2 f. So, if you look back to this particular figure to get a physical significance of this one. So, L 1 f and L 2 f is this particular case for example, this is your L 1 f like heat diffusion distance in solid 1 and this is your L 2 f like heat diffusion distance in solid 2. Now, the way I am describing it, it is far more difficult to compute this L 1 f L 2 f based on several geometric consideration and also thermal conditions at the contact contact junction. This L 1 f and L 2 f can be calculated by these two equations and what you see here that is L 1 f is equal to R j by pi to the power 1 by 2, this is tan inverse is coming because of some geometric configuration. Now, what is n? n is the number of asperities, n is a measure of the lifetime of a contacting asperity. What is the lifetime? That means that uh, how many, how much uh, time that this contacting asperity will survive in this particular case. Now, chi 1 and chi 2 if you see that chi 1 and chi 2 it is the thermal diffusivities of 1 and 2. So, uh, so, uh, so, so all these things instead of uh, uh, k 1 and k 2 they have put this chi and chi 2 and from this you can calculate this and r j how to find out the values of r j. r j is nothing but r naught, r naught is your actual contact radius into 1 minus P upon P s and what is P s? P s is defined as the scissor load. Scissor load means at what load this materials they see is at the contacting surfaces R naught by R a square plus 1 and then finally, that P s that is scissor load one can calculate by this particular equation 
where P s is equal to A n H naught divided by 1 plus 12 mu square to the power 1 by 2. What is H naught? H naught is again defined as the hardness least of this H 1 and H 2. So, essentially if you go back to this particular slide, so suppose this is H 1 and this is H 2, you have to take the lower hardness in calculating the scissor load and A n is your nominal contact area, mu is your contact uh, coefficient of friction. Okay. So, then, uh, then, the, then the last point is that for example, how to find out that the contact temperature on a semi infinite solid. In case of the semi infinite solid, what will happen suppose if you consider that this is your contour of the solid. Okay. So, this is the contour of the solid and on which a heat source, what is the heat source? Heat source can be a pin for example, because pin is sliding at a distance v, uh, at, a, at a sliding at a speed v. Now, this heat source at a time t is equal to 0 is here, at time t is equal to t the heat source is placed is sliding in this direction uh, minus x direction and if it goes minus x direction then it goes from this region to this region and then you find out that what is the heat that will be generated. Now, why contact temperature is so important? Because contact temperature is important because that wire volume V also related to the contact temperature to this particular equation. For example, if what you see here this has some kind of Arrhenius type of relationship where V is equal to A into A L exponential minus Q by R T F. What is R? R is your universal gas constant, capital T F is your flash temperature, rho naught V naught, rho naught is the average density of the oxide that is formed and F naught is the mass fraction of the oxide that is oxygen. And, the, and then this all this all this equation essentially tells that all these parameters is to be multiplied by T s, T s is your sliding time. So, what you see here very clearly V is the wire volume, A is your area of contact, A L is your Arrhenius constant. So, the pre exponential term within the bracket is your pre exponential term is the Arrhenius constant, your exponential term Q is your activation energy for the diffusion or oxidation your R is your universal gas constant, molar gas constant and T f is your flash temperature. So, from here you can clearly see that flash temperature also can influence to a large extent what is the wire volume. Now, one has to also understand that these contact temperatures depending on the sliding speed. So, depending on the sliding speeds different equation needs to be used to find out that what is the contact speed. So, for example, at low speed L, L is your peclet number and this peclet number is defined here. So, if L is less than 0.1 then maximum temperature is equal to 0.5 NL. It, if it is modestly moderately low speeds 0.1 to 5 then theta m is equal to 0 0.5 2.25 beta n l and again if it is high speeds l greater than 100 then theta m is proportional to 0.345 n l to the power half and at very high speed is 5 less than l less than 100 theta m is at 0.435 gamma n l to the power half. While l is mentioned here as a peclet number which is p to the power half v is your sliding speed this is your thermal diffusivity, it is your mean contact pressure and this is your load. And what is capital N? Capital N is nothing but mu g by j pi p m by rho s. So, overall what you learned is this contact temperature that how this contact temperature can be determined and how this contact temperature is. So, again this contact temperature that is one thing is a dependence on sliding parameters, right. So, that is very important that how this contact temperature vary depending on sliding parameters and two what is the 
what is how this contact temperature also influence on the wire volume okay and this influence on wire volume you can also find out that uh, flash temperature and then from there how this oxidation takes place and then how it would influence the wire volume in metals for example phase transformation also takes place in metals and some of the ceramics like zirconia and all phase transformations of metals and ceramics is largely influenced by contact temperature so from material science point of view the contact temperature is very important because contact temperature can in can 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 cause certain phase transformation in titanium alloys or some zirconia ceramic to happen and as a result the material properties also would change uh, substantially uh, because of the large contact temperature thank you